Default random walk means is that there is no pattern in the data. There is no pattern in the data. Just you know pure random, okay? And there's nothing in the data that you can use uh, for forecasting your future. Something similar, okay? So this is also a rand for typical random walk process, okay? Uh, okay. So random work process can be closely related to the behavior of stock market. Stock market also many a times uh, doesn't have much of uh, you know uh, information in the past values. You know, uh, although many people will say that you know forecasting stock price or return is very much possible, but that's not always the always the thing. Uh, stock market many a times uh, behaves purely as a random work. Sometimes it has some pattern, but many a times it it, it has no pattern in it. It's also used in, in understanding Brownian motion in, in many uh, science and uh, science areas, also in finance. A movement of a drunken man, somebody who is drunk, you will have no pattern. If you and if you try to understand or study his pattern of walking, there's no pattern at all. Okay. So it's also a limiting process of an AR1 process. So AR1 process is just y t equal to y sorry y t equal to pi y minus t plus a t right so this is an AR1 process so when phi equal to 1 you take a random mode process okay if phi is less than 1 you have the AR1 okay so this is a typical condition for AR1 so random work is basically the special case of AR1 where you cannot uh, go ahead in building a forecasting model so, so what the implication, what is the understanding or the takeaway point? The takeaway point here is that the implication of the process of this type is that the best prediction of Y for next period is the current value. Okay. Now, if you have a time series data uh, and that follows random work, uh, just stop there. Don't have to do anything. Uh, so, you all need to uh, convey or uh, you need to communicate to, uh, to the audience is that the best prediction for this particular time series for future is nothing but the current value. There's nothing that can, nothing more can be done uh, other than that. Okay. It can be shown that the mean of a random work process is constant, but the variance is not. Okay. So the name suggests unit root means we are only talking about how to find out whether the phi that we talked about in the non stationary series is 1 or not. Okay. So, in a, in a stochastic trend series uh, that we have just learned, if phi is 1, then we assure it's a random work process. And that's what we call it unit root. And we need to statistically test that before getting to know. Um, so, when we have a stationary system, uh, you know, we know for sure that the effect of any shock that is going to happen to the uh, uh, the time series will die out gradually. Okay, in a stationary series, if you have a shock, it moves up, it eventually comes down, and then it removes somewhere in the mean. And then, even if another there is a shock in upward or whether it's downward, it is if there is a downward shock here, it will again come back. But that's not the case in non-stationary system. In non-stationary system, if there is a shock, okay, if 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 something goes up never comes down to the mean all right so there are two types of non-stationary okay one case where you have the you know this case is just one and the other case is phi is greater than one we have we just taken beta just keep changing notations but you know the second case we of course will ignore for here so the first case we would like to see when is the case when we have the phi equal to one and that we can get to know using a uh, Dickey Fuller test. Okay, so this is a test uh, using which we can find out whether there is presence of unit root or the time series is uh, unit root or not. So unit root is just you know another way of saying that whether it's it's uh, a random work series or not. All right. So the simplest approach is just to have a year year one series. Okay, yt with the theta, and we have psi of yt minus one. Okay, and we would like to know if psi um, is is sorry is if phi is one or not. 
Now this is AR1 series, right? And we expect phi to be less than 1. If it is equal to 1, then that's a problem. That's a random box series, right? So the hypothesis testing in the case of a decubitulous test is, is like this. The uh, modulus of phi is either 1 or modulus of phi is less than 1, which is the alternative hypothesis. So we have the series yt equal to yt minus uh, 1. This is theta naught plus at. And then what we do is that we simply subtract yt minus 1. So from left and both right, yt minus yt minus 1 equal to uh, theta naught sorry phi uh, so yeah this is theta sorry theta naught plus y t uh, minus 1 uh, which is again psi phi here minus y t minus 1 plus a t okay now this is uh, just delta t right so delta y t is equal to theta naught plus here we can take y t out so y t then inside we have 1 minus 5 plus 80 and then 1 minus 5 we just denote uh, with some uh, other uh, you know uh, symbol okay so uh, so this particular term if it is equal to 0 then we have unit rule otherwise not so it has now changed okay so null hypothesis is now either it's 0 or it's less than 0 okay so just you know slight change you know here we are comparing with one or less than one here it is you know either it's zero or less than zero there are three types of decubular test we can do uh, i'm not going to the details of it but depending on the kind of random work we are trying to uh, understand we'll have different type of decubular test the first case is a pure random work there is no drift there is no theta theta term here right it just um, the uh, past value of yt okay so we would like to know if the coefficient is zero or not in this case the second case we have a drift okay uh, and in the third case we have a drift and we also have a deterministic time component okay we have theta 1 t so time right it's the deterministic trend so it's just a combination of deterministic and stochastic trend okay linear time trend okay so there are three types of decubular test we can do depending on what type of uh, what the intention is when we can also do uh, all three and see which one is actually uh, is the the best for the given time series data so how do you uh, find a test statistic and how do you do that right? you just apply you know OLS you know you have the equation regression equation you just find uh, we just estimate the parameters so parameters here is is phi right remember it's one minus five you know we just change it to a different symbol but you know ultimately we are trying to find out what phi is so we can find that out using ols and then we can find out the t statistics okay we can find out the t statistics and then we see um you know uh, whether it's significant or not given that it's uh won't allow you to let's say you know forecast future you rather take more of a guess depending on the past values of, of the time series rather than you know doing some sort of analysis that is uh, you know not going to give any accurate result. So that's one of the you know test important tests that people do before even starting to you know explore other uh, time series models for forecasting and it's, it's quite important early enough if you get to know if it's, it's a particular time series is random work then you do not go ahead with any of this any of this uh, you know sophisticated methods uh, you will be saving uh, a lot of time uh, in doing in doing that